Namaste and welcome to this narration from the Krishna book, Volume 2, Chapter 32, titled Prayers by the Personified Vedas. In 1972, I was fortunate to begin hearing and reading the Krishna book, but out of my foolhardiness and folly, when I arrived, at prayers by the personified Vedas, I read just a couple of paragraphs before skipping the rest of the 66 pages of that chapter. Now, after all these years, I have finally read the chapter and quite frankly, I am captivated. Chapter 32 is not just one story, but contains six stories centred around a question asked by various sages and the answers given which were expertly woven together into one amazing landscape of prayers. In this video, I have titled each of those six storylines beginning when King Pariksit asked his spiritual master, Sukadev Goswami, a question. So that's the beginning. Sukadev then told a story about when Narada Muni asked Narayan Rishi the same question. Narayan Rishi related to Narada that the same question had been asked at a great meeting of sages on Janaloka. At that meeting on Janaloka, the four Kumaras who were present began discussing this question and one of the brothers, Sanandana, told a story about the personified Vedas. The personified Vedas for whom this chapter is titled spoke 28 verses of which I have included maybe four or five of these in this presentation. Narada Muni, after listening very nicely to Narayan Rishi's narration of the Kumaras and the personified Vedas, he went and spoke to his disciple, Veda Vyasadeva. You will also observe that there are a couple of sections scattered through this video that I have titled Note. These were taken from the writings of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So let's begin now with the first one, which is a dialogue that begins with King Pariksit's inquiring from Sukadev Goswami about a very important topic in understanding transcendental subject matter. His question was, since knowledge generally deals with the subject matter of the three qualities of the material world, how can it approach the subject matter of transcendence? Since the mind is material and the vibration of words is a material sound, I do not see how it is possible to understand transcendence from such expressions of material sound. Sukadev Goswami replied, My dear king, in this regard, I shall narrate a nice story. This story is important because it is in connection with Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This narration is a conversation between Narayan Rishi and the great sage Narada. Note, Narayan Rishi still resides in Badarik Ashram and is accepted as an incarnation of Narayan. Badarik Ashram is situated in the northernmost part of the Himalayan mountains and is always covered with snow. Pilgrims still visit this place during the summer season when the snowfall is not very severe. So now here is the nice story that Sukadev Goswami is going to tell. Once when Narada, the great devotee and aesthetic among the demigods, was travelling among different planets, he desired to meet the aesthetic Narayan Rishi 
personally in Badarik Ashram and offer him respects. Note, this great sage incarnation of Godhead, Narayan Rishi, has been undergoing great penances and austerities from the very beginning of the creation to teach the inhabitants of Bharat Vasa how to attain the highest perfectional stage of going back to Godhead. His austerities and penances are exemplary practices for the human being. The incarnation of God, Narayan Rishi, was sitting among many devotees in the village known as Kalapagram. Of course, these were not ordinary sages sitting with him, and the great sage Narada arrived there. After offering his respects to Narayan Rishi, Narada asked him exactly the same question King Pariksit asked Sukadev Goswami. So section 3. The Rishi answered by narrating a story of how the same question had been discussed on the planet known as Janaloka which is above the Svargaloka planets, such as the Moon and Venus. On this planet, great sages and saintly persons live, and they once discussed the same point. The great sage and Narayan Rishi began to speak, My dear Narada, I shall tell you a story which took place long, long ago. There was a great meeting of the denizens of the heavenly planets and almost all the important brahmacharis, such as the four Kumaras, Sanandana, Sanaka, Sanatana and Sanat Kumar, attended. You were not present at that meeting because you had gone to see my expansion, Aniruda, who lives on the island of Svetavipa. In this meeting... All the great sages and brahmacharis very elaborately discussed the point about which you have asked me, and their discussion was very interesting. Note, the four brahmacharis, the kumaras, are recognized scholars in the Vedas and other shastras. Their unlimited volumes of knowledge, backed by austerities and penances, are exhibited by their sublime, ideal character. They are very amiable and gentle in behaviour, and for them there is no distinction between friends, well-wishers and enemies. Being transcendentally situated, such personalities as the Komaras are above all material considerations and are always neutral in respect to material dualities. In the discussions held among the four brothers, one of them, namely Sanandana, was selected to speak and the other four brothers became the audience to hear him. So number four. Sanandana said, After the dissolution of the whole cosmic manifestation, the entire energy and the whole creation in its nucleus form enter into the body of Gabadakshaya Vishnu. The Lord at that time remains asleep for a long, long time. And when there is again necessity of creation, the Vedas personified assemble around the Lord and begin to glorify him, describing his wonderful transcendental pastimes, exactly like servants of a king. When the king is asleep in the morning, the appointed reciters come around his bedroom and begin to sing of his chivalrous activities. And while hearing of his glorious activities, the king gradually awakens. Number five. So now we are going to hear some of these 28 verses from the personified Vedas. O oh, unconquerable Lord, you are the Supreme Personality. No one is equal to you or greater than you. No one can be more glorious in his activities. All glories unto you. All the living entities, being your parts and parcels, 
are naturally joyful, eternal and full of knowledge. But due to their own faults, they imitate you by trying to become the supreme enjoyer. Thus they disobey your supremacy and become offenders. And because of their offences, your material energy has taken charge of them. Thus their transcendental qualities of joyfulness, bliss and wisdom have been covered by the clouds of the three material qualities. Therefore, without taking shelter at your lotus feet, one cannot surpass the influence of the material energy. Actually, we, as personified Vedic knowledge, are always engaged in your service by helping the conditioned souls understand you. The personified Vedas continued, Dear Lord, it is very difficult to achieve perfect knowledge of the absolute truth. Your Lordship is so kind to the fallen souls that you appear in different incarnations and execute different activities, and your pastimes are very nicely described in the Vedic literatures. Such pastimes are as attractive as the ocean of transcendental bliss. People in general have a natural inclination to read narrations in which ordinary jivas are glorified. But when they become attracted by the Vedic literatures which delineate your eternal pastimes, they actually dip into the ocean of transcendental bliss. As a fatigued man feels refreshed by dipping into a reservoir of water, so the conditioned soul, who is very much disgusted with material activities, becomes refreshed and forgets all the fatigue of material activities simply by dipping into the transcendental ocean of your pastimes. In this way, the personified Vedas said, Dear Lord, when a living entity, by your grace only, comes to the right conclusion about your exalted transcendental position, he no longer bothers with the different theories manufactured by the mental speculators or so-called philosophers. The personified Vedas therefore concluded, O oh Lord, you are the unlimited eternal, and the living entities are the limited eternals. Dear Lord, although great mystic yogis may have full control over the elephant of the mind and the hurricane of the senses, unless they take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, they fall victim to the material influence and are never successful in their attempts at self-realization. Such unguided persons are compared to merchants going to sea on a ship without a captain. The personified Vedas thus worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in different ways. Offering worship to the Supreme Lord by praying means remembering his transcendental qualities, pastimes and activities. But the Lord's pastimes and qualities are unlimited. It is not possible for us to remember all the qualities of the Lord. Therefore, the personified Vedas worshipped to the best of their ability. Sages like Narada and the Kumaras travel throughout the universe to educate the conditioned souls that their business in the world is not that of sense gratification, but of reinstating themselves in their original position of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus the great sage Narada, after hearing from Narayan Rishi, became completely realized. He became established in the truth and he became so happy that he offered beautiful prayers to Narayan Rishi. Number 6. Narada Muni 
after offering respects to Narayan Rishi, went to the ashram of Vyasadeva, who was his disciple. Being properly received by Vyasadeva and seated very comfortably, Narada Muni narrated the entire story of what he had heard from Narayan Rishi. Vyasadeva was Sukadeva's spiritual master, and so in this way Sukadeva Goswami informed Maharaj Pariksit of the answers to his questions. One should follow in the footsteps of Sukadeva Goswami and all the other Vaishnavas in disciplic succession. After understanding the prayers offered by the personified Vedas, one should surrender unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Namaste. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 